Okay, yes, ma'am. Um, so when it comes to performance, uh, I mean, a lot of vocalists, uh, this is more personal question. But no, I, this I is good. That other vocalists yes, have the same yes. Um, for playing an instrument while we're singing, it kind of changes, you know, you're moving and you're, I, I play keys, so I'm a little bit more right. clenched over the keys. Yeah. How do we implement the same posture and technique while moving on stage. Right, I know. We love to curl around our instruments. I don't know of a piano player that doesn't love to do this when you're playing. Be included. But, you know, do you stand or sit? I stand. You stand, okay. You just use that pressing down into the floor, opening it up. You're, you're gonna have to change a little bit of how you glance at the keyboard. So, and you wear glasses. So, not on stage. Not on stage, okay. So you, you just glance down to catch what you need, keeping this open. Practice like that. Okay. You have to practice like that um, because it's, it, this is all muscle memory. Everything we've done here is muscle memory. So you want to change that muscle memory that's this into that. It will help a great deal. Better posture might help you. I mean, not that you're No, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it does. It does help. A little bit of a tag along question with that. Yes, sure. Go ahead. For, for those who don't play instruments, um, uh -huh. I guess if you're moving around the stage a lot, uh, as a like, pop artist, you're kind of doing dancing and such. Yeah. Uh, how do you kind of maintain that the strength in your lower core while your legs are moving around? All right. It doesn't, it doesn't interfere. The leg movement doesn't interfere. Okay. Um, it, but keeping that lower back loose, so because that's the technique we worked with today. I have a lot of different ways of going about that, but that lower back opening, you just want to make sure that's flexible. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Um, 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 I'm going to go to this young lady back here in the there. Um, how do you loosen a very tight jaw? Oh. Yeah, good question. Um, actually, I have a, uh, I'm going to show you, how do we get out of this? Um, I'm going to show you my, I have online training. Uh, oh, actually, I have it on my <coughs> iPad, so you can look at this later. Um, but what, I have an entire series of lessons on loosening the jaw. That drop jaw open to your bottom, that's the beginning of it. All of us have tight jaws. You can do a very gentle massage. What The joint is here, that's the joint. And the joint open, it opens like this. Only joint in the body, that it's not a crocodile with the hippopotamus, it opens that away. So the jaw will actually slide back a wee teeny when you release the jaw. My favorite is just when I'm falling asleep at night, breathing in, I release my jaw, breathing out, I release my jaw. And I did that many years ago, and now all I have to do is think that, and boom, my jaw drops. So great question. Yes, ma'am. Um, vocal rest or taking time off of speaking all together, mm -hmm. singing all together is something I've been considering. Um, just because I've never done it before, do you have you found that that works, or know people who really think they see a difference, or do you know there's good times to do that? All right. Well, let me let me address it from another direction. Um, the vocal damage that you you saw that slide. I I have worked with a lot of people doing that. The ENT or the otolaryngologist says vocal rest. That's the only way to heal. And and my response is nah. Because you rest, it feels better, it's healing a little bit, and then you go right back to the same habits that caused whatever you needed to rest. So if you've got that problem, it's because of those habits. You need to change the habits in order to change the result. So yeah, it'll help you heal, but, in, but it, unless you use new habits, well, it's not going to do you any good long term. Yeah, great question. Yes, ma'am. So, 
So um, I noticed on, on a slide you had that um, like screaming and shouting is always going to cause damage. Is there a way to sing like the kind of music that I do mm -hmm. in a healthy way? Yes, yes. Screaming is a different use of the vocal cords. It, they, you know, they vibrate like this. Well, when you're screaming, they're so tight together that they can barely move. So when they let go, they do this, and then they slap back together. Not fun for your poor little vocal cords. So what it would mean a lot of power here. So if, if I do something like, come on, come on, whoa, whoa. So I would, I would have you do, um, be a guy, a thug from Brooklyn. I don't know if you've ever been to Brooklyn, but they, you know, they stand on the street going, yo, hey, yo. So you get that kind of depth, yo. And that translates into a shout that isn't damaging. Okay, good. Anybody, yes, um, yeah. So how can, you, how can you practice like circular rating like the tips, yeah, instead of like um, blocking air coming through after every like, to prevent or to um, punctuate? Like I would tend to like to hold my breath after I like make a statement. Okay, you know? well circular breathing means something different to me. Uh, circular breathing, because jazz, I'm from the jazz world, and, and um, jazz instrumentalists use circle, circular breathing, meaning they're playing when they're <laughs> breathing in and when they're exhaling. Okay. So I think you're talking about something different. So can like you ask like it a, a Like a continuous flow so that you can speak. Um, like a yeah, family? a, a um, continuous yeah. flow. Well, everything we did today is a continuous flow. Okay. Everything we did. Um, and, but you had something specific with consonants and such. Did you no, say that? No, I think I, I think you actually answered my question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, um, the, yeah. How do you get the high pitch? Because then, like, if you want to, like, find the falsetto. Right. Okay. How do you get the high pitch is the question. My first question to you is what's high? Right? Why is this high and that low? It's because of the way those pitches vibrate. For a singer, higher pitches vibrate in your head. Chest voice comes from the fact that lower pitches vibrate in your chest. It doesn't mean you're going to go down in there to produce the sound. Or go way up there to get a high note. But, um,. If, I, if I'm doing something like summertime, and I want to take that up to the high at the end, uh, summertime, and the living is easy. Fish are jumping, and the cotton is high. Now that's really low for me. Your daddy's rich. And your mama's good looking. So hush, little baby, don't 